I just wanted to ask a quick question about um, spinning plates. Go ahead. So spinning plates for those that are new is just dating multiple women simultaneously in a non-monogamous fashion. Yeah. So can you sort of elaborate on that a little bit? Because I've heard the term and I get the the gist of it, but mm -hmm. I, it sounds like it has the potential to be a bit of a nightmare and I'll certainly blow up in my face. Are you are you new to dating? Like, have you been married for a while or with a chick for a while? No, no, I'm on like a dating app and it's working for me. Okay, uh, but I find I invest, you know, two or three dates, four dates, whatever. That's mm -hmm. a a month and a half. Okay, you know that amount of time, and then if it doesn't work out, it's like all right, and so then it's it. on to the next one. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. Um, for those of you that are listening that are newer to the channel and this concept, pay very close attention because this is the most important thing that you should be doing if you're a single guy. This is definitely very important if you're newly divorced or you've broken up um, because the mistake that most guys make is they'll just get into one relationship or they'll go from girl to girl to girl to girl. Um, for you to discern good from bad, for sweet to be contrasted from spicy, you need to have both on the plate at the same time. You're not going to know what a good chick looks like versus a bad chick. You're not going to be able to spot red flags quite as easily if you're only dealing with one chick at a time. And by the way, uh, we've adapted this strategy from women. Women are natural plate spinners. Okay, So women will date multiple guys simultaneously in a non-monogamous fashion until they're like, oh, I really like this guy, so I need to claim him. And then she's like, hey, Bill, where do we stand? Where is this going? Um, you know like what are we sort of thing and then he's like oh okay and then they talk about a relationship and then she tells all the other guys to fuck off even though she was seeing them prior while she was with bill maybe even sexually engaging all of them or some of them so we're just taking a card out of their playbook brendan right so all you do is you know if, if you're on a dating app you match up you open up some conversations you set some dates whatever and then you just start going out with these gals right simultaneously um, you don't owe them any kind of explanation. You don't tell them that, oh, hey, by the way, you know, after the first date or third or 10th date, you don't tell them, oh, by the way, I'm seeing other people. You just let it be known by way of your actions and your availability in your schedule that you're up to chasing excellence, potentially seeing other women, but you don't over overtly state it. So for example, um, you're seeing a gal on Tuesdays or Wednesdays or something like that. You're vetting her. You want to see what she's made of you're leaving your Thursdays and Fridays open for other women. One day she says to you after, I don't know, six dates, hey, you know, let's get together this Thursday. You, you've already got a date lined up. You don't tell her, well, I'm busy, I have a date. You just say, I already have other plans, but I'll see you next Wednesday, right, sort of thing. And that's all that you owe them at that time. Um, the strategy really is just to spin plates until it's obvious that a woman has chosen you. So I always say, choose women that choose you, right? So don't go out chasing women. Just go out dating them. And then when she starts coming to you and is like, Brendan, you know, I dig your vibe. Where's this going? Where do we stand? And you've looked at her. You've vetted her for the red flags. You know, you've seen that it doesn't really exist. Um, if there's a red flag that exists, like let's say she's posting provocative photos on Instagram, that's the time when you say to her, well, you know, I like you too, but I can't take a chick seriously or invite her into my life if she's posting, you know, bikini pics here on Instagram on a regular basis. That's just not who I am sort of thing. So what are you going to do about that? Um, that's when you deal with those conversations, but early on dating should just be dating multiple women, right? And you can be intimate with them. You, you don't have to be intimate with them. You can do whatever you want. I would discourage you from banging them all. I think it's a bad habit to like just bang everything that moves, like have a genuine connection. She's obviously attracted to you. She has a genuine burning desire. Then, you know, you want to take it to that step, do it, um, uh, be safe about it, you know, use protection, obviously. Um, did you have any other questions about it? Like, does that make sense? Yeah, I guess I sort of saw it as like, uh, I guess that it makes sense for like the first few, you know, like you say, first stage, first like initial. Just it's, it's before any formal commitment is made. Now, right. you can keep seeing other women after a formal commitment is made, but you're, but you're going to have to put her on notice and just say, look, I'm not going to be sexually exclusive with you. Right, right. All right, so that she understands that it's there. Uh, you're not going to embarrass her. You're not going to take, you know, like a side piece on vacation. You're not going to knock up a side piece. They're going to come knocking on your door and be like, hey, you know, I've got Brendan's baby, by the way. Surprise. They don't want to deal with shit like that. Um, so there are guys that continue to do it into perpetuity where they'll just overtly say, yeah, okay, you know, I dig your vibe and I'm glad you want to claim me and I'm happy to be, you know, with you. 
Uh, you're with me and me only, by the way, but I'm going to sometimes exercise some options, right? So there's that option as well. Believe, believe it or not, it that also works. Like it's not that uncommon. Um, some guys have a moral issue with the notion of uh, seeing multiple women simultaneously, whether it's through culture or religion or whatever. Um, I, I say to hell with that. Fuck what other people think. Um, people have been telling us what to think and do for years and look how that's worked out for most of us. You know, we've ended up in a situation where, you know, our beliefs have just shattered over betrayal, cheating, you know, something that women do that, uh, you know, compromises a safe world theory that you hold with something. I talk about that in the opening of my book as well. All right. That's good. Cool. All right. Thanks, Brendan. All right. Have a good one. Enjoy spitting those plates, my friend. See ya. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the, um, it's the fun stage of dating guys. Like when you're dating and you're not exclusive, you get variety. You don't have to put up with bullshit. There's, uh, I mean, some guys put up with bullshit, but it's like, if you have options and you're attractive, you're handsome, you're captivating, you're doing something with your life, you're successful. Women are going to want to see you. Like, you know, they meet you, they, you know, they sniff you out. They, Oh, this guy seems to be made of something, you know, they see your car, you know, they see where you live sort of thing. That's, that's when things start to escalate and they express more genuine interest in you and they start choosing you more. That's when the genuine burning desire sort of happens sort of thing. And if they misbehave or if they have red flags or they're problematic or they're drama inducing or they manufacture indignation or, 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 then you just go, you know, it was fun, but bye, you know, sort of thing. Like I can't take you seriously. Right. And you know, that's it. You're just being honest with them. Some people say, um, like the Christ pillars, like the um, very strong biblical guys are like, oh, well, you're just making more whores or whatever, or something like that. It's like, no. Um, I've spent a lot of place in my life when I've been single, and um, I've never met a virgin, ever. I, like throughout my entire, every single woman that I've ever met has never been a virgin. So I don't know where all these virgins are that these Christ pillars seem to think that um, you know, we're ruining by spinning plates or dating women simultaneously. Like it, it, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, it doesn't exist. Like, where are they? I've, I've never met one. So if they're so common and, you know, guys are ruining women by dating a bunch of them simultaneously, it, it sounds like bullshit to me. It sounds like something to control and manipulate you to do what they want you to do sort of thing. Women are already promiscuous. So indulge. I mean, I'm just calling it what it is. Women are promiscuous, indulge. What's what's the difference if you're number 10 or number 93 or whatever the hell it is? I mean, the chances are if you're with ni like if you're number 93, she's probably going to be a shitty choice for a long-term relationship. She's going to have extreme difficulty pair bonding. She's probably going to like struggle to be useful in your life. She will be disrespectful, and if things don't go her way, because you're number 93 and she's done it 93 other times with a bunch of other dudes, she's very happy to go to 94 and then 95 and 96. They're not very sticky, right? I mean, if you meet a gal that's got a very low notch count, that's a better choice for a long-term relationship. So when they're coming to you and they're like, hey, you know, where do we stand? Where is this going? I dig your vibe. The first thing that I look at is notch count. Very first thing. I mean, it's by far the most important thing. Um, all women will go through a hoe phase. You know, I hate to say it, like every single woman out there, they're not going to admit it. They're going to, they're going to make up shit or I wasn't a whore. Or I didn't do anything wrong. Or, you know, I felt like left out because all my other friends were doing it. Blah, blah, fucking blah, whatever. Um, pretty much all women will go through a hoe phase, right? Um, some women will get married at like 19 or 20, have a bunch of kids and then get divorced at like 34, 35, 38. And they go through their party years then, woo, right? And they're... You know, you see them at the resort smashed as fuck by the pool bar peeing on the stool with their girlfriend screaming, cackling away at like, you know, late 30s, early 40s, recently divorced with half the shit, partying it away, right? So sometimes the whole phase happens later on in life, um, but it does happen. So you guys do what you want with that. I really hope you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to watch the full length podcast, you can find that over here, that clip's from. If you're newer to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe over here and pin down below in the top comment, you'll find a bunch of useful links to my website, my supplement line books, and a bunch of other stuff. Have an amazing day. Peace out.